Hello there. This is for anybody who may not have been through a Department of Work and Pensions medical assessment for Employment and Support Allowance, Personal Independence Payments or the all encompassing umbrella universal credit. What actually happens is, firstly, you'll get a letter telling you that you have to attend a medical assessment. In, this is usually at a Department of Work and Pensions medical centre. Previously, it was run by Atos, who are a French IT company who appeared to have some kind of medical assessment team offshoot from them, the, the friends. Um, or from what I understand, it is now run possibly by a company called Maximus. And what happens is you get this letter that tells you that you have to attend this appointment because this appointment will be to determine what the benefit you should be entitled to based on your in how your illness affects you. So you can take a friend, carer, professional person with you from what I understand, somebody who we may know you and know what kind of fear symptoms you have and be able to help with any questions that you have difficulty with answering. If you want to record the um, assessment, you have to ask in advance what, in between getting the letter and the date of the assessment if you can record it using um, some kind of recording equipment. Um, they don't provide anything like that and if you don't ask in advance, you can't just decide to record it on the day. Um, my experience today was apparently with a nurse, although in the past, um, when it was at us, um, the person just referred to themselves as a healthcare professional, which many of them weren't, and because I've never dealt with this particular a company to do with medical assessments before, I couldn't tell you if the person that assessed me is actually a trained medical professional. But you'll go in and initially they'll go through a series of questions. Um, some of them are obviously difficult questions. They ask you things like if you've experienced suicidal thoughts, if you're there um, because you benefit them. Um, Entitlement is due to mental illness, not just physical illness or solely um, mental illness of some kind, which may or may not include having learning difficulties as well, because some people have learning difficulties too. So they'll ask you a series of questions, they'll ask you like, if you're able to do simple things like cook and make a cup of tea which shows that you have the motor skills to be able to function a kettle and a cooker and things like that. These kind of things can actually go against you. I know from my previous experience of having a medical assessment and the zero points that they scored me as, um, it's not the medical professional that does the assessment, that do, does the scoring, they just do a report and it's sent to a decision maker after you've gone through your assessment. This could take three to four weeks, so you might not hear for a month um, because they've got other people that they've um, been medically assessing. So. They do do a physical um, part of the uh, assessment as well, um, which is whether or not you can bend your legs up and like lift your arms and bend over and um, if you can push the hand up with your um, either one of your legs or down with either one of your legs, um, which should 
is I assume to demonstrate the strength of your legs. I have an injury in my right knee from when I was a child and I was hit by a car. So I can't actually push up or down properly or bend my right knee that much. But him, as I said, these medical assessments can be somewhat tricky and they may ask you questions that aren't actually relevant to anything in like as if it's a casual conversation they may do like I had happened today where they asked me what the character was on my t-shirt which they didn't need to know that as far as I probably she didn't type that up anywhere but why she needed to ask me that I assume it's a trick of some kind to see if I can recall the names of characters from cartoons and things like that. As I said, you if you actually let them know in advance, you can actually record your medical assessment yourself so you'd have your own proof. Um, you, if you've got somebody with you, you've got somebody that's a witness to what was said so that when you do get your information back from your medical, if there's anything that you didn't say or that you did say that they've omitted, if you've got a witness or you've got a recording of what was said, then you basically got back up for what was said. So you go through this process and then you wait. And my previous experience of this was I received zero points on my medical assessment. This was 2013-2014. Um, at the same time as going through the process that I'm about to explain, I was moving home and having some uh, difficulties in, in regards to some friendships due to being on, ending up on the appeal rate of um, employment support allowance because I was originally in the support category. There's two categories of ESA currently. There's a support category where you don't have to look for work or do anything that will help you get into work and then there's the work-related activity group. So obviously I was changed eventually from being on the appeal rate which was £126 a fortnight that I was still expected to be able to pay everything that I already had to pay like my basic utilities and things like that out of this appeal rate of money. I also had the added stress on top of having some relationship issues with some friends which we won't go into and then moving home I had to um, appeal and send in a sick note which is called a fit note by the Department of Work and Pensions for some reason um, which somebody from the Citizen Office originally tried to tell me not to send in but the, the sick note or fit note was actually my proof from the doctor that I needed to send in um, to prove that I am actually ill, so I was going through this process. Um, I had somebody go with me to my tribunals. Um, unfortunately, the person that was going to go with me, there was a little bit of friction because at the last minute they weren't able to go with me, but um, I was able to take one of my relatives with me um, on short notice, and um, unfortunately, it was decided in that um, medical, uh, in that um, tribunal rather, um, that I, I do believe that was the one where it was decided, there was two tribunals, there was one where they decided that I wasn't included, entitled to disability living allowance anymore, which led to me having my a mobility bus pass which I had because I've suffered from panic attacks as part of my illness. Um, so I lost my, when my bus pass ran out um, in March of last year I've been having to pay on the bus and the trade and everything ever since um, which is incredibly difficult to do when I, um, because I was placed in the work related activity group on um, and I wasn't finding work, I went back into education, I've studied my GCSE English 
Um, I studied some other courses. I did a peer mentoring course, um, which was a level two peer mentoring course. So I've done things like that, but um, the issue with the medicals and having somebody decide that um, this invisible illness it isn't actually as bad, like which is probably what they're going to do again now. Um, the the whole stress that it can cause for people, um, it'll be highlighted in the news ever since the work related activity group and everything came in and all the benefits have been changed and money's being cut that there are people that because they couldn't afford to both pay their utilities and buy food to be able to eat um, have died and things like that so I think it's important to give a somewhat semi-autobiographical account of what it's like to go through a medical assessment. Um, it may not appear to the person doing your assessment that you're actually as stressed and anxious and um, terrified of what's going to happen when it, the report. Um, it does feel like that they just think that they're writing a report and that the um because the decision isn't made by them they've just written a report they it it's like they're um pushing their responsibility for that decision maker could be coming to the decision that they've made onto the carpet and ignoring the fact that it's their report and what they say in the report and how they word things and the things that they omit and the things that they put in that wasn't said um, that leads to the decision makers saying what they said and you ending up on less money that you, than you were getting. I originally received disability living allowance once a month. I would receive my employment support allowance support category fortnightly um the combination of those was approximately 500 pounds a month um currently because i've had to secure a loan from the social to be able to pay for certain things to improve my home um i'm down to even less money than what the um work related activity group rate is uh, because I'm paying back the loan um, I'm also having my water rates taken out of my benefits so um, fortnightly currently I think per week I'm living on not even the majority of the £90 it will be a week because if I put £10 on my gas and £10 on my electric and then pay my TV licence and um, then buy food and because the, uh, because the work related activity group does require you to be looking for work online, I require the use of the internet at home. Um, panic attacks and having anxiety um, something that people don't understand is even if I could go to the library and use the library computers or use public computers my anxiety would be heightened by the fact that and my paranoia as well would be heightened by the fact that other people would be able to see what I was doing and even though people probably wouldn't be looking at what I was doing that doesn't mean to say that it doesn't feel like they would be um, that's one of the um, symptoms of having mental illness. Um, you can be paranoid and that can lead to anxiety, it can lead to panic. Um, so, like saying that, oh, I could go to a local library or I could go to a relative's or I could go to a friend's, that curtails the heightened uh, the heightening of the uh, people forget that yes if you're going to go into your local town to the library if you're going to travel to I mean the expense of that as it is and um, if you buy a daily saver 
on any of the different bus companies. Um, it can range from between three to four plus pounds in a day to have to travel to go to use somebody else's computer or a local library computer if you don't live within distance of a local library or the library that's local isn't open at certain times that you might go want to go down or they don't even have computers. Um, saying that you'll have access to internet um, to somebody that suffers from social anxiety and other kinds of anxiety um, that's like um, that's just not possible and it needs to be an understanding that people that have social anxiety and other forms of anxiety can't just go and get on public transport and go to a relative's home or go to a friend's home like, even if you don't have to catch public transport if you live within walking distance of somebody's home um, or something like not me I'm not saying me Right, I'm saying anybody in general, so don't take it as me saying, oh, I can't go down to this person's home that doesn't live very far away because, like, the distance. Um, I could have anxiety attack, a panic attack between my home and that person's home. We're not talking about just me now. This is only a semi-autobiographical video. And I know it's quite long, but we need to go into these things because it needs to be understood what these medical assessments do be it Athos in the past or Maximus or whoever it is who's doing it now, the end result always ends up being that a person is reduced to having less money and then is criticised and called a scrounger and told that they're lazy and nah, told that they should just go and get a job and so and the complications and how complex it is to actually suffer from depression and anxiety and have panic attacks to the point where you've been so bad that even like different medications that you've tried haven't worked how they were supposed to. Um, it's a very complex issue that it affects friendships, it affects family relationships just from one medical assessment affects so many other aspects of your life whether or not you can afford to buy food for that fortnight whether or not you can afford to keep your lights working and your heating on and be able to stay clean and wash your clothes and do all the things that are taken for granted just from one medical assessment um so this is the process that a lot of people have gone through and I know a lot of you probably know all of this anyway and I know it's turned into a bit of a ramble rather than just specific, specifically being about the assessment but it's about more than just the actual assessment it's about what happens beyond the assessment and we need to have these conversations this is what I said in a previous video about a different topic we need to talk about these things and that's why I believe the things that I believe in my heart about it and it's not about being lazy and it's not we don't not have motivation to do things because we're lazy we don't have motivation to do things because we have a mental illness which is a serious but invisible illness or we might have physical illnesses that people can't see where we're constantly in pain or something so I've rumpled on for nearly 20 minutes again now so this is going to be another long video where I probably won't even be like the video bit won't be on it'll just be pictures again apologies for that but the, that is part of anxiety not actually wanting to be on camera recording it to a camera and then just deleting the video it um please like and have positive debate in the comment section don't have negative debate and don't be attacking people in the comment section because it is my opinion and my experience and everybody's is different 
So, I will see you again. Well, won't see you, but I'll speak to you again soon. Thank you. Goodbye.